What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode 60 of the Thoughtful Banter Podcast. I'm your host, Matthew, with my co-host, Hussein. Yes, sir. And today we're going to talk about, we're going to revisit a topic that we've covered before. It's very prevalent in our Muslim community, and it's haram relationships. Mm -hmm. Controversial. Ding, ding, ding. Is it controversial? I don't know. It's controversial. We always hear people talking about it. We always know people are in them. We know people should get out of them. Yeah. I think what what may be controversial is the... Like, you know those marriages and people are engaged, quote unquote, and they just be engaged for years. Forever. And they're like touching and, you know, doing all <laughs> the things that a married couple would do. Yeah. <laughs> but they're just engaged. And you're like, what does that even like, mean? Are they Mahram? I'm, I just want to know, like, are they Mahram? Yeah. And I I'm mean, like, if they're Mahram, aren't they married? If they're Mahram, they're married, yeah. I know, I know I'm saying, but like, so why are, why are they engaged for so long? Why does everyone need a big wedding? I don't know. It might be. It might be. A cultural thing because I know there is some stigma around like in certain cultures there is stigma around like temporary marriage right so maybe it's like we do this but we just call it engagement I'm not exactly sure honestly if it's just engagement like the American conception of engagement then yeah it's haram <laughs> but like it's, it's just straight haram there's no like there's no if ands or buts about it but if it's like okay we have a temporary marriage on the low and we just call it engagement, obviously that's something different. Yeah, I, I think it's really important. I think that that might be the only thing that's controversial about this episode is, you know, people might get upset that we're calling engagements haram. Um, well, stop calling it an engagement. Type B. Call it a marriage. <laughs> I mean, so here's the thing. Um, we, we try to record this several times. It's a difficult subject to talk about. So, like, let's, let me just shoot straight. Mm-hmm. We are Muslim. Our metric should be Islam. Mm-hmm. I don't care about your culture in this regard. (laughs) I don't care about it. I don't care about my culture in this regard. Mm -hmm. Iranian, American here. I don't care about your culture. If you're Daisy Pakistan, like, I don't care, Arab. It doesn't matter to me. If it gets in the way of what God's command has been, it's wrong. In our conception of these relationships, like, it's confusing because we care about Islam. We're Muslim. At least we say we do. Yeah, we say we care about Islam. We're Muslim. We invite a sheikh to our wedding mm-hmm. that be having haram free mixing because of culture. And it's just confusing. And it's like we need to get some act right and, and shoot straight. Uh-huh. You know, so it's like haram relationships are confusing for a lot of different reasons. I think the biggest reason they're they're confusing. And, and when I say confusing, it's confusing because like we know they're wrong. But sometimes our culture, like our parents, are enforcing haram relationships upon us. And we say this is halal, like the whole engagement thing. There are people who get married like or get engaged. There's no like Islamic engagement. There's just marriage, by the way, mm-hmm. right? They, they just say we're engaged. They're touching. The, the mother-in-law, father-in-law are touching the other kids like they act like they're a mahram to them. Mm-hmm. Um, but no one's saying they're married. It, it's just really stupid. It's really, really dumb and stupid. <laughs> and I'm like, why can't like, and I think why some people do it is because they want to like have a nice wedding for their kids a lot of times mm-hmm. because that's like more official. And like, that's fine. But why can't we say, why can't they say we're married? We're going to have a wedding. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a wedding later. Yeah. Don't be offended. Mm-hmm. If you're offended, you suck. Like they got married. Let them be halal. Let them be able to sit next to each other. But a lot of times these people would be sitting next to each other like, they're not Mahram. <laughs> Why is their thighs touching each other's thighs? Uh-huh. <laughs> what, what the heck is going on here? It's like, this is Haram. So uh, take it from me. I'm talking too much. Like Matthew said, bottom line, if you're not married, you're not Mahram. <laughs> and so, and so there's, no, like, there's no Islamic engagement that looks anything like the American engagement, right? There's no like just this period where we're hanging out and we're fiancés, right? But we're not you know one on one, yeah. Like no, yeah. I just I just think it's really interesting, right? Because like as a kid growing up, um, you know, like we're just told get married, get married, get married, and like you know, I know we all come from like different levels of religiosity, but I honestly I think a lot of our people know my like I think a lot of people are really religious, like a lot of Muslim guys and girls, you know, they they, they don't touch non-mahram, they don't have um, non-mahram friends. You know, um, and it's confusing. And it's also like, uh, to be fair, for a lot of people, it's hard to get to know some of the opposite gender, especially for like, if you've been a good Muslim boy or a good Muslim girl your whole life, 
you know, it's like, oh, forbidden, you know, the opposite gender, forbidden. And then, like, you want to get married. It's like, well, how do I even talk? Like, what, mm-hmm. like, women are like, what, what do even men think? You know, like, how do I even talk to a dude? You know, or like, how do I even talk to woman? It's like, what are these foreign creatures, right? Like, because we don't have that experience, we, we don't know how to proceed. And then we're not mad at him either. But then sometimes, like, our parents are like, oh, no, you're going to marry the person, so throw away the not mad at him rules. You know, it's like, that's not what we should be doing either. So it's, to be, to be fair, it's hard. I understand why a lot of cultural parents act like it's okay Mm -hmm. because they're like bro like loosen up (laughs) but at the same time it's like how do you get to know this person i don't know like i think i definitely think it's hard um but i do think we should go we should go back to like islamic principles which is like again don't make the marriage process too hard as well Mm -hmm. you know like i also don't think to an extent there's you know, back in the day, bro, where marriage success rates were higher, people weren't doing that much crazy vetting. <laughs> well, marriage success rates were higher for a lot of for a lot of reasons. A lot of reasons. You not get all killed them, to get divorced. Not all, <laughs> them, not all of them good. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, I think I think what you're saying is right though. There is like a like when we come, either for the people that were here became Muslim or were here and already Muslim, or the people that were Muslim and came here. You kind of have, there is no like set way. I mean, some people are aided by their, their home cultures and it makes it a little bit easier, but even still, it, it has to be modified in a certain way. And I don't think that we've come to like a set way or set procedure that we do these things as Muslims living in America, right? Because likely that, that individual who got married and was heavily aided by their culture, their parents' culture from, from back home, their kids... They're probably not, their kids are probably not going to be as upheld by that culture as they were because their parents are mostly American, if not completely. And then as it goes further and further down the line, obviously you get like this bigger and bigger separation from the home culture that kind of gives us the structure for the marriage process. And so now it's a question of like, okay, how do we figure out as Americans, as American Daisies, Iranians, Iraqis, and just complete Americans, fully full blown Americans, white people, black people, whatever. How do we create a culture of marriage that a structure for pursuing marriage that is in line with Islam and isn't silly? Uh, so I think this is something we brought up in the Sheikh most of episode about like economics. And we're seeing this like a big, this is such a big thing. Um, even like to the Muslim write at stories we're reading. I think we have to make marriage a lot more affordable Mm-hmm. And I think we have to change our economic model of thinking to a more socialist one, community wise. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think it needs to be normalized for young people to be living with their parents when they first get married initially, because damn, it's expensive. I'm sorry. It just is to live here, yeah, especially like in the areas that we're in. Yeah, it's so expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, and if your parents have a basement, you can renovate or a nice spare room that's private. Um, like renovate that and be patient if your marriage can't pass living with your parents for a bit I don't know how long it might be able to last because like life gets harder. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, Additionally, like we have to throw out these expensive weddings now we have to but I'm like This is stressful for people. Yeah, because it's not even just for the kids for the parents parents see parents feel like they need to give their child this wedding Men are like 50 years old, taking out second mortgages on their homes so their daughters can have the wedding that they want. Sheesh. You know, and it's like, this is really stupid. Mm-hmm. This is really un Islamic. Like, whatever, if, if, unless you're rich, I mean, hey, go for it. If it isn't with your means, right? That's not waste, technically, I don't think. But, like, also, like, if you're willing, however much you're willing to give for your kids wedding no i would hope no, you're able no. to give them that much for a down payment on a house no bro there's a there's a limit where like i don't care how rich like how small a percentage of your wealth it is i it's, agree it's like like if you're spending anywhere close to like half a million dollars on a wedding i don't care how small a percentage of your wealth that could be like 0.005 percent of your wealth i don't care <laughs> you are walling out <laughs> honestly any wedding that's more than like a hundred grand a hundred grand's a lot, bro. bro. It's not for these people. A hundred grand, that, but that's is what I'm a saying. Lot it's, of it's, it's, no, it is a lot of money. But I'm saying for these, like people, for a wedding, it's a lot of money. No, I'm saying for these people, it's not. 
Whoa, these people, people it's these desis, I'm calling it out. <laughs> these people, desi people, <laughs> I'm, I'm Brother, not, I'm not no, editing this. No, no, I'm not, yeah. no, no, I gotta speak the truth. I gotta speak the truth. I gotta talk to. I love y'all. Y'all know I love y'all. Okay, but it's not just desis though. And Arab student Persians. Yeah, they all do it. Everyone. All right, so so like, these people's Muslims, not just Desis. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Am I not canceled out? I'll say it's I, I love y'all. Listen, I love y'all, but bear with me. How can y'all have multiple weddings? I be seeing a wedding for. It's not even necessarily the husband side. Hold up, the wife now side. Now we're talking about Desis again. Anyway. <laughs> one in the motherland. <laughs> one in Rom. Like we celebrities. We all got to celebrate it. There's no <laughs> <laughs> relax. You know what I'm saying? Like this I'm has just, spiraled. I'm just, I'm just no, but just bear with me. If y'all can all afford that, alhamdulillah. But just think, like that's easily a hundred grand. Mm. That's easily a hundred grand. Why can't we just be like, I don't know, like. Why can't we just all give them that money and like give them a, like pay off at least half a home. We're just giving that money to pay off their student debt. You know what I'm saying? Like, because the money is the hardest part of a marriage in America, mm. statistically speaking. You know what I'm saying? So, like, we let's solve this economic problem. Let's stop throwing these big weddings that are, like, overly expensive. Have a, have a fun big wedding. You and I had some fun weddings. They weren't yeah. crazy expensive. No. But, like, you know, my wedding was at a friend's house. Yeah, they, they, I mean, they, I they had say, a huge house. I was gonna it say was nice. you could have multiple weddings. It's really about the price of it. Though. Exactly, it, it, it's, it's the price. Like, yeah. I mean, again, unless if y'all roll, if y'all roll, uh, bread and out of control, y'all have the money. I can't tell you it's not affordable, but I'm just saying, like, if most mar- if the marriage problem in this country is wealth, which honestly nine times out of ten is, Sheikh, I don't have money. How am I supposed to do this? And I don't think it's necessarily always responsible for us to be like, bro, just want less. Mm-hmm. Just just be humble. I'm like, rather, just lower my bills. <laughs> just lower my taxes. I mean, I mean, I think there is something to be said for that, too. No, there is. But like, there's also a real element of I need to make this much money. Mm-hmm. And we believe what God will provide. We also believe, OK, but I have to work this much. How am I supposed to sustain uh, myself and another person? This is a this is the biggest, I think. Bro, I feel, I feel like we hacked it, bro. This is honestly the the biggest um, issue when we when it comes to us getting married in our communities. I, I think, it, like for religious folk, if you're religious and it's hard for you to get married, this is probably the biggest issue. How money. do we how do we hack this money issue? But is bro, you disagree? I don't disagree that it's an issue. I just don't think the solution is. Don't get married, obviously. No, I'm not saying that. Okay. What do you think I'm saying? Ex- sorry, explain it again. I'm, I'm saying let's throw out all of these expensive weddings. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's 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 stop with all of the unnecessary engagement ceremony. Then marriage. Let, let's just have a marriage ceremony. Or let, let's have let's have the marriage and then the walima, the wedding. Mm-hmm. Right? Let's like get, the nikah and then the Yeah, walima. the nikah and then the walima. Let's have the nikah and the walima. Let's not have bajillion ceremonies that all cost hella bread. The people are getting credit card debt to pay for. And let's live with our parents initially. Like, let's, like, destigmatize being broke. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Destigmatize being broke. This is the thing, right? I'm saying, like, we don't want to look broke. I think that's honestly it. That's people, a lot of it, yeah. Pe- we don't want, and, like, I, like, and, and, and like, you can get deep with this, like even with entrepreneurs, like Alex and Mosey talking about like the entrepreneurs who are making money but don't want to look broke, mm-hmm. who are like renting the car they can't afford and saying, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. It's like, bro, you haven't made any sales, bro. Like, uh-huh. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, why, why, why are we scared to look broke when our profit was broke for a good period of his life? Like all, all, so many of our profits were broke. It's a, I don't know. It's like a status thing. I get like, I don't want to be broke, but if you broke, you broke at that moment. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean you're not hard worker. Doesn't mean you're not even like doing what you can do. But like, it might be a there's going to be a period in your life where you're going to have to endure financial hardship, and that's a sacrifice. Because you can either accept your broke and live within your means, or you can live outside of your means and accumulate more and more debt. And then further down the line, you'll never reach a certain point of uh, relative stability. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I think this all goes back to like, you know, us being here either being subsumed by the kind of Western culture, individualistic culture, or coming here and us being subsumed by the individualistic culture. 
um, because we basically throw away things that we have known and things that we've actually experienced once we once it's here. Plenty of communities, even here, did what you're talking about. You know, big families. You know, everyone was married. Everyone has kids. Even if, even if no one's making thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars per year, everyone's getting by because everyone's helping the other person. Yeah. Right. But instead, we've become so like focused on ourselves and then conscious about our image that we kind of throw all these things that we used to know, <laughs> all this knowledge that we knew and we had away. And uh, at, I mean, uh, to your point, it does us a disservice because, again, like to shake most of us point, if you ask every single elder what they had when they got married and how old they were, a lot of times it was young and a lot of times they had nothing. <laughs> right? yeah. But they were supported by their parents. And he made a point. He was like, you know, if you show me a, a man who is working on does his like like on his dean is working hard. He works at 7-Eleven and is renting like a basement. He's like, if you don't, <laughs> if you're going to reject him, then tell him to come to me and I'll marry my daughter too. <laughs> 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 That's gangster. You know? That's gangster. So like, I, yeah, I don't know. But like, we, we forget, bro. We're going to, we're going to die, bro. So much of our dean is about like our death. And I know it's like, I know it's like easier said than, than, than it's easier said than done. But again, we have to go back to our value system, right? Mm -hmm. This dunya is not for us. Yeah, I'm, you know, really, like we're going to die. We're we're getting married to avoid sin and to get blessings. Like the whole purpose of this is for God, mm -hmm. right? It's cool to want to be wealthy. We've said before, I want to be a millionaire. You want to be? I could die before I even edit this episode, bro. Mm -hmm. And I would die if 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 I die, then I would die poor. Mm -hmm. Oh, was my life my wealth? Yeah. You know, like, yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same argument against people who are like, oh, well, they need to get this job and finish this degree before they get married. And it's like, what if you get your degree and then the minute you walk off the graduation stage, you die? Mm -hmm. Like you just trip and break your neck or yeah. something. Right. Some really and, goofy. <laughs> and all that time you were sitting instead of, you know, you, you could have had a relationship and instead you were sitting through all throughout all that time. What was it worth it? And, and that's how you meet your Lord. Once was you're dead. It? everything you've done up to that point that's what you're taking with you we're only taking our actions with us we're not taking our bread we're not taking like we're just taking our actions mm -hmm. so it would have been better imagine that brother who let's say before he went to university he was like i need to get married i want to be on my dean i don't want to deal with the temptations in college i want to be like i just want to be on sarat al right he gets married He's living in a basement. He's working at 7-Eleven while he's studying in school. He's in his master's program. For six years, he's married. And during that time, he's, he's accumulating blessings. He's being a good Muslim. And then right when he's about to graduate with his, like, master's, he's like, I got my master's in something very prestigious, mashallah. I'm about to, I'm about to walk out of university with a $150,000 a year paying job. I die. Was his like was his life whose not life worth was, it? Whose life was better though? Like you know, in the two scenarios that we exactly that, we gave, right? that I think the second guy died a winner mm -hmm. in the eyes of Allah because he did what like he was he was following the dean. Mm -hmm. He got married and he put his faith and also that's what I think like you put your faith in Allah like the to do what the second guy did he he wasn't doing the math of. Well, if I have to provide for a wife, my income, my, my expenses are doubled by this much and I could be saving that much. So that $7,000 I could be saving a year, I'm spending, I'm investing in the stock market, I'm investing in stock market 8% back a year. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to get married when I'm 32 and I'm old and my hairline is already ruined and I have to go to Durkee to buy myself a new hairline. And by that time, all the women who I'm attracted to are all super materialistic and boring and I'm just a boring guy. Or all the people I would have married are taken. Yeah, they're all they're all taken. Yeah. All the all the good ones I wanted are taken and now I'm just left with what I don't want. And you're gross now because you're 32 and you're not married yet. You have no social skills or risk. I'm sorry, it's rough. <laughs> it, this is this and this is this is the rough part. I have to say this. And this is why the Haram relationships things is interesting. The good Muslim guys who aren't getting married soon are really the biggest losers because they're not having Dean or Dunya because <laughs> they're not having Dean or Dunya and you get left like when you're like in your late 30s getting married and they haven't been in any of our relationships in that time it's like 
then you get awkward and weird. Mm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. I you, mean, you, like, you get that little, little itch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this dude's been down bad for a long time. It's <laughs> all so, so like him, Shay. Yeah. yeah. I'm, trying, I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm trying to get a wife. And it's like, wh- dude is off the charts, bro. He's we- he hasn't been socializing. Uh, <laughs> He's been institutionalized. Bro. I mean, yeah, I'd also like to make a distinction. Obviously, there is a distinction between someone who's, like, been pursuing marriage but just hasn't had the yeah. like like say yeah. say like their their standards are normal it's not like they have unreasonable standards or whatever and they've been pursuing marriage it just hasn't worked for them there's obviously a clear difference in that person than someone who's just like oh no i'm just gonna push it off i'm just gonna keep pushing it absolutely off. to be fair i'm not yeah. gonna roast people who like please I'm sorry <laughs> if you're trying to get married like I, i'm talking about you bro <laughs> i just like to make that distinction yeah very thank you thank um, you for yeah. that i'm not roasting someone for like not getting married mm. i'm roasting the effort yeah, I mean that 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 that's a big part of it. You mentioned something else that I wanted to talk about, but I don't remember what it was. You talked for a minute. My bad. Um, it was gonna be the doom. Haram relationships, Riz, the money, and the parents' basement. Oh, it might it might be the money. Hold on. Usually, I don't have to think about the banter, but it, it's um. <laughs> well, you're thinking about being thoughtful, so that makes sense. Oh, 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 yeah, this was going to say. Um, <clears throat> one of the best pieces of advice I got on my marriage journey, because, of course, when you're young, like, you know, you start. I started wanting to get married at, like, 17, maybe. Same alert. Um, I started being serious about getting married at, like, 19, like, preparing myself, you know, what do I need to get in order? What kind of plan do I need to put together? Um <clears throat> And one of the, of course, you're like always stressing about like, okay, like obviously I'm going to need money and I'm the primary breadwinner, like all this kind of stuff. Right. Um, and this can get deep uh, actually, cause, but Let's I'll, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll kind of branch into it as I, as Let's I go get along, deep. Come on. as I go along. Dive Anyways, in, baby. One, some of the best advice I received was two things. It was one, if you ask for a sister's hand in marriage, and someone rejects you simply because, like only because of your earning potential at that moment, then you're better off without them. That was one. Two, he said, your job from God is not to make money. Your job is to work. Everything else comes from God. <laughs> you know? And that, I, feel like, I felt like at that moment that I was told that by like this mentor of ours, Matthew was there too. I literally felt like a burden come off of my shoulders. Because like once you actually think about it, like we're saying, like we don't think about how little of life is actually in our control, right? We think we can have control over all these different variables. And really it's like, no, bro, no. <laughs> there are things that happen to you. You don't happen to things. You have, like, a very small kind of maybe, like, this big relative to something like this big piece of potential that you can alter with your own actions solely. Yeah. Right? Um, And so once we kind of step out of that and we're like, huh, it actually makes it easier for everyone. It made it a lot easier for me. I was like, I my job, my duty is to work and to try to provide. Everything else is not in my hands. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I'm going to do what I've been told to do. And God, who's true to his promises, is going to do what he said he's going to do. And I think the, the great part about that is Allah tells us to trust him. You know, Allah doesn't say, let me provide for you and then you act. Allah's, Allah's telling us, act and trust me. I got mm-hmm. you. You have to take the jump, though. It's like it's a relationship. It's like I, I need you to take a step. You have to show me you have faith, mm-hmm. right? And that's kind of like a, a goosebump moment. And one thing I was actually telling, um, this is gross because I'm, like, I'm complimenting myself. But I was talking to, <laughs> I, I was talking to a brother, and I didn't know like you know sometimes you talk to someone and they're like, dude, that was so impactful. And you're like, I don't even remember this conversation. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, all the time. <laughs> I just, not not with other people. Sometimes you just be telling me things that are like, bro, that really you know did something <laughs> to me. And I'm like, huh? huh? <laughs> I was just talking. <laughs> but I was talking to a young brother, and he was like, uh, like a good family friend, and he was trying to get married, and he was like, you got any advice? Or I don't know, but I I remember I, I told him I was like, 
just know, I was like, the best piece of marriage advice that I can give you is if you're pursuing marriage for the right reasons, you're, you're, you're listening to God's command that makes you on God's team Mm -hmm. and God's got your back. So don't worry about anything else. Don't worry if the relationship doesn't work out. Don't worry if you're going to be broke. If like all this drama, just release yourself from all that and just say, I'm on God's team. I'm doing what God wants. And he came back to me later. He was like, bro, that was such good advice, bro. <laughs> like, Cause it gets, it just gives you faith. Yeah. Like I'm trying to get married. This is Quran. This is Sunnah. This is, I don't care what school of thought you're in. This is in every school of thought in Islam. There's no denying. This is part of the deen. If I'm trying to get married, I'm trying to listen to God. If you are opposing me in that battle, bro, yeah, you're and being goofy. Also, I think a lot of times people hear risk and they think money. Mm. Risk is not necessarily money, mm. right? You getting married and your your family friend renting you out his basement for half of market price, right? That's risk. <laughs> that's nice, bro. Yeah, that's, that's the risk. That's a blessing, you know. Yeah, it's, risk isn't. It's, it's just like the blessings in life. Yeah, children are risk. Health is risk. Time is risk. What you're what you're driving is risk. Everything. Yeah. So like, um, I don't. I, I just want to put that out there because just because God makes a promise to give you risk doesn't mean you're also going to be like a billionaire, millionaire, whatever, like super wealthy. Yeah. Necessarily, um, but you're gonna have things taken care of. Yeah. Uh, and it'll be magical. Yeah. And you'll, and you'll find money in places you didn't, like, you didn't even have the money, but somehow yeah, the I thing wanna, was I taken wanna, care I of. I want to tell a story, actually, on this point. I was, uh, my wedding was in July. Um, my wedding was in July, and I had to buy a wedding ring. And it was about, like, mid-June. I had no money. I mean, like, worst case scenario, I probably would have borrowed money, but, like, I had no money at the time. And I had... I had just finished my second to last semester of college. So I had one more. Um, and so it was the summertime. I had no money. So I was like, you know, scrambling, like, how, how can I get some money? Can, who, who can I work for in enough time to get some money to buy this ring? It wasn't even like a super expensive ring. I just literally yeah. didn't have any but you money. Still, you need some racks. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm like thinking about this, whatever. I go to sleep. The next day I wake up, I get an email from the University of Maryland. And it said, basically, we got all this COVID funding from the government and we dispersed it to the level we were supposed to disperse it during the semester. So, like, I think that semester I didn't have to come out of pocket at all for the semester because of that COVID money. But basically, after we did all that, we still have money left over. So everyone who who qualified for a specific grant is also going to get an additional five thousand dollars going to be dispersed to their to their account. I wasn't taking any summer classes that semester, so none of that money went to any of the classes that I would have had to pay for if I took summer classes. So I get the email, it's like $5,000, and then like a couple of days later, I literally see in my, <laughs> in my student account $5,000, and I'm like, hit bank transfer now. <laughs> hit bank transfer now. And I transferred $5,000 into my account, and I used that money, you know, obviously to pay for the things I needed to pay for for the wedding to happen. I had nothing to do with that. Yeah. <laughs> I had nothing to do with like that was pure luck. Yeah. Pure, pure luck, not in my hands. And the only thing I can think of is God saw me, saw I was in that moment struggling, saw that I was still trying to work towards getting it done and then helped me out because that's what he says he's going to do. I think that's a good, I think that's a good spot to wrap up. Um, you know, let's just remember that, like, hey, guys, like, Allah is our sustainer here. I am not sustaining my, like, we are not sustaining ourselves. And, like, our life is being sustained by Allah. You don't think that your bank account can get some fake money digits in it because of God? Relax. Yeah, from, I mean, that's what happened to me. From it happens somewhere. to me all the time, From bro. somewhere. I'm like, I don't know where this money came from. <laughs> God, God did. From somewhere it happened, you know. Yeah. Uh, $5,000, like, yeah. I had nothing to do with that. Yeah. Anyways. All right. Let's wrap it up there. Thank you guys for listening. This has been episode 60 of the Thoughtful Banter podcast. Please tell us what you thought of the episode in the comments. Um, We out.